Hi, this week's weekly roundup of new mega products has SDRs, audio, SBCs, even more RF, and a bit of muscle. Yeah. A lot has happened since the last roundup, so to avoid this being a one hour marathon, I've put some runner ups on my website, so check them out there. First up on Kickstarter, yeah I know, I said I wouldn't do any more 3D printers, but this one looks like it just might fly. $99 US gets you a 3D printer, even though I won't back this one, I'll keep an eye on it as it might just take off. There's now a Dackberry Pro campaign up. This one is a souped up version of the previous model, capable of 384kHz at 32-bit resolution, using the PCM5242 DAC, and a 3 watt amplifier. Nice. The Vezor is gaining a lot of attention at the moment. It's a general purpose robotic arm that can weld, 3D print, laser cut, and even, uh, okay, mix a cocktail for you apparently. It's a full kit containing a Pi 3, touch screen, cameras, magnetic encoders, smoothie boards, steppers, actuators, and a frame. It has a 800mm reach, but no info on accuracy as yet. Pretty expensive at over 3 grand US, so something that a makerspace would actually purchase. This campaign is for a book covering the basics of electronics. It's in tutorial format that takes you through MCUs, discrete components, displays, motor drivers. Seems to have everything there in an easy to read format. If your projects need a bit of muscle, then this linear actuator looks pretty good. It gives you the freedom to choose different motor types and arm lengths using an extruded aluminium tube, so it can handle heavy or light loads. There's currently four motor choices from mini geared DC through to a heavy duty Namiya 23 stepper. And here's the creator, Ivan Vanko, in his workshop. While over at Indiegogo, there's absolutely nothing. Nice. Looks like they will live up to their promise. Well, actually, there is something. EasyVolts is a USB-based DC power supply, capable of providing any voltage from 0 to 15 volts up to 1 amps from a plain old USB port. Voltage levels are controlled from a USB serial device. One of my subs, Crazy Ape, put me onto this pretty cheap FPGA board from Arrow. It contains an Altera Max 10 FPGA with 50,000 logic elements, 5 tall megs RAM, 64 megs flash, spits out 92 of the 500 GPIOs on a BeagleBone Black compatible header. It also contains DSP blocks, 12 bit 18 channel ADC at 1 mega samples per second, HDMI, Ethernet, audio. This baby has a lot and for only 65 US dollars with free shipping. Nice. Q-Wave have started a DIY crowdfunding campaign to release a tiny board called the Melon. Oh man, what is it with fruity names these days? This one is based on a Xilinx Spartan FPGA with 500,000 logic elements. It also contains an ESP8266, 4 megs SPI flash, USB port, LEDs, buttons, and the best feature, two Pi compatible headers. You could potentially load up a RISC-V CPU onto it and you'd have a very functional tiny SOM. Intel launched its Euclid Robotics Compute module, selling for US$399. Expensive, but it contains a quad-core Atom X7Z8700 clocked at 2.4GHz. Also contains 4 gigs DDR3 RAM, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, IMUs and a VGA stereo imager and 1080p camera giving you a VGA depth video stream at 60 frames per second. Runs Ubuntu or the robot operating system. Seems the Intel based boards are finally playing catch up. Minnow board have released the Turbot. There's two flavours which are based on the Intel Atom quad core E3845 or dual core E3826. Both have 2 gigs DDR3 RAM, SATA 2, SD slot, gigabit ethernet, USB 3.0 and a bunch of GPIOs. You can currently pick this up at NetGate or Mouser for around $190 US dollars. QB Board have released an SBC based on the All Winner A20, called inventively the QB AIO A20. Contains a dual core Cortex A7 at 1 GHz, 1 GB DDR3 RAM, 8 to 32 gigs expandable EMC, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Gigabit, Ethernet, USB 2.0, two mini PCIe slots, one for MSATA and the other for LTE and requires 5 volts, 4 amps DC power. This board actually contains a system on module which is called the Einstein A20, which can be powered without the baseboard from either USB or LiPo. 
We'll be seeing more SBCs appearing with SOMs to try and cut manufacturing costs, as all the headers and ports add up to a lot of the overall cost. Or else, another thing to change the SBC landscape will be the royalty-free Thunderbolt 3 standard. This is actually pretty big news, and when SBCs start using it, we will be able to say goodbye to USB, Ethernet, HDMI and power ports, and replace it with a single USB-C connector. Ah, fantastic! Meanwhile, over the Friendly company, they have released the NanoPi M2A SBC, which runs the quad-core S5P4418 SOC. This board is almost identical to the NanoPi M2, with 1 gigs DDR3 RAM, wireless, gigabit Ethernet, and all the other usual stuff you see. You can pick this up for around 30 US dollars currently. While another fruity company has gone bananas and released a new SBC as well, this time with a slightly inventive name. This one is called the BPI M2 Berry, containing the all winner V40, which is almost identical to the all winner R40 except for a few additional serial buses. SATA, Gigabit Ethernet, AXP221 PMIC, Reset and U-Boot buttons. But the rest of it is identical to the Pi 3 in every way. It seems more companies are thinking that copying the form factor of the Pi will enable more sales. Hmm, don't know about that. For 26 euros you can pick up an Olimex ESP32 evaluation board, which exposes the Ethernet interface and CAN bus, along with SD card, relays, LiPo battery management and a 40 pin GPIO header, which I think is supposed to be Pi compatible. Meanwhile, ST Micro have launched an STM32L4 evaluation board in an Arduino style form factor. Contains an 8 megabyte SPI flash, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, sub gigahertz RF, NFC tag, and more sensors you can poke a stick at, like capacitive touch, 9 DOF IMU, temperature, pressure, and gesture sensor. Wow. Samsung have released the Artix 053 Wi-Fi module, which runs the Tozen Artos on a Cortex R4 at 320 megahertz and has 8 megabyte flash, 29 GPIOs, multiple encryption standards, and a wide 5 to 12 volt DC input. You can pick this up currently from DigiKey and Mouser for around 35 US dollars. Rack Wireless have launched an Arduino style board called the WizCam, which runs the Nuvaton ARM926 SOC at 200 megahertz. It also contains 16 megabyte SPI flash, Realtek RTL8189 module, and all the usual complement of GPIOs. There's also a few add-ons you can get which provide SD slot and a VGA camera. Mistral are about to release a tiny SOM based on the Snapdragon 820, which contains, surprisingly, 6 gigs DDR4 RAM, 128 gig flash, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, 2 PCIe, USB 3.0, 9 DOF IMU, and GPS on a tiny 51 by 26 millimeter board. No pricing yet, but this is one heck of a module. A lot has happened on Tindy over the last two weeks. The Open Home Security Board is, well, designed for home security in mind. Contains an Atmega 328P and several communications options, from RS-485 wired serial to RFM69RF. Runs off a 5 to 20 volt DC input, or USB with LiPo battery management. This board is a level shifter for the ESP8266, designed for controlling RGB LEDs such as WS2812s, or APA 102s. This tiny board not only contains an ICS40720 MEMS mic, but also a buzzer. Runs up to 3.3 volt logic levels, consuming only 285 microamps. A good option if you want to add audio comms to your project. For those people into RetroKit, this board contains a YM3812 FM synthesizer IC. Requires a 5 volt supply and runs 5 volt logic, which the Pi and Arduino is happy with but you need to be careful if you're using anything else. If you're into CNC milling or 3D printers, then the Cohesion 3D looks pretty good. Contains four stepper driver sockets, MOSFETs for fans, hot end and heat bed control, running smoothie firmware. This board seems to have everything. Pandwire RF is a board designed to provide a gateway between sub gigahertz RF and Bluetooth. Contains the NRF51 Bluetooth module and CC1111RF module as well. It also contains LiPo battery management and antenna port power control for connecting to an LNA. This gesture sensor is similar to SparkFun's board, but slightly cheaper. The APDS9960 enables detection of ambient light, colour measuring and gesture sensing. Runs on 3.3 volts and accessible over ITC. 
hmm, this one might have been a good option for my MQTT letterbox. Looking for a cheap GPS module? This one will set you back around seven US dollars and actually comes from a shop in mainland China. Runs off a three to five volt supply and the MIA data accessible over the usual 9600 board UART. If you want to muck around with LoRa modules, then this Pi hat seems to have everything. Slap it onto a Pi Zero W and you have your own LoRa, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi gateway. It also contains a handy OLED screen. This next one is the smallest handheld arcade board I've seen. It comes in kit form, but has the KL02 MCU pre-soldered and pre-programmed. This is an ultra-low powered Cortex M0 Plus MCU. There's been a number of updates to the DGNO boards, the DGNO B version 2 and the DGNO version 3. Both have had improvements made based on customer feedback. The 4.75 to 12 volt power input range is nice, as well as having access to all the GPIOs. The November 5 store has a number of very useful breakouts for several semiconductor packages, such as this QFN20 breakout or this VSSOP8 breakout. This board is based on the MCP1603 booster, which provides you with a steady 5 volts and up to 100 milliamps, from very surprisingly as low as 0.8 volt input. IT have now added a GSM module to their Sonoff power devices. This one opens up a lot more opportunities for remote power control. All you need is a SIM card, but alas, it contains a GSM module, so it won't be able to be used in many countries. The FIPI was a Kickstarter that I backed. Sadly, I haven't got mine yet. But Seed Studio have it available on back order. This board contains five networks, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, LoRa, Sigfox, and Dual LTEM. Running the ESP32 SOC, you can get it to be a bridge between all networks or automatically switch based on what is in range. You also have access to most of the ESP32's GPIOs. There's also PyTrack, which is designed to add GPS capabilities to your FIPI. Also contains a 3DOF IMU, SD slot, LiPo battery management, and can drop down to one microamps in deep sleep mode. Or there's the PySense, which is the same, but with a bunch of sensors on it instead of the GPS module. If you want to add voice commands to your project, then the Helite sensor can recognize up to 500 voice commands. Draws a constant 15 milliamps from a 2.2 to 5 volt supply and accessible via serial UART. The Yardstick 1 is another STR that can transmit or receive RF signals below the 1 GHz range. It's not a fully variable STR, but has a number of fixed frequencies and modulations. Comes pre-installed with RFCAT firmware. This next one comes from Great Scott Gadgets. The Hack RF1 is another STR capable of transceiving between 1 MHz and 6 GHz. It's expensive, but one of the gold standards for STRs. I really need to pick up an Octo Snap. If you ever have broken off headers to fit, only to discover that you're undersized, then get one of these. Cheap enough to chuck in your toolbox. Meanwhile, over in China, DX has a pretty cheap 2.2 inch TFT LCD touchscreen running the ILI 9225, so it's supported under several Arduino libraries. It's an 8-bit parallel interface, so you'll need an MCU with 14 GPIOs. IC Station have a bunch of Realtek modules in, like this RTL 8195 module, running a Cortex M3 with Wi-Fi, 1 megabyte flash, 40 GPIOs, and USB host and device. They're a strong competitor to the ESPs. If you want something breadboard friendly, they also have this breakout, which connects into a baseboard that is the same as this one, except that it contains the RTL 8710 Wi-Fi module, which is similar to the 8195, but a lot less features. Or you can buy the individual module much cheaper. These have been around for a while, but I haven't included them on a roundup yet. It's similar to the DigiSpark, but contains an atmega 32 u 4 instead of the AtTiny85. Ellie Crow have a competitor to Adafruit's Feather. This one matches all the specs of the ESP32 Feather exactly, but cheaper. Meanwhile, over at Banggood, they have a stack of ESP-based boards to confuse everyone, like this ESP-M2, which is based on the ESP8285, or the ESP-1, which is based on the same, or the ESP-S, based on the ESP8266. They also have several small eyelids, this one is a 0.96 inch blue yellow display accessible over SPI and this one accessible over ITC, both running off 2 to 5 volts and requiring around 80 milliamps of current. 
This MEPI CSI camera module based on the OV5647 which gives you 1080p resolution for a pretty decent price, coming in at around $13 US each. The PCA9306 IC is a logic level converter specifically for I2C and SPI buses. It also enables you to connect slow I2C devices to a fast bus to avoid issues. Sometimes you just have to deal with analog switches. You can replace them with one of these which is a quad single pole double throw switch. Can only handle 3.3 volt logic though. These buck converters are pretty decent. This one is capable of pushing out a variable voltage up to 20 volts at three amps from a variable input voltage up to 23 volts at 95% efficiency. Also has inbuilt soft start to avoid power surges. If you're in need of a few power amplifier breakouts, you can pick up 20 PAM8403 based modules for only $6 US. Drives 4 or 8 ohm loads at 3 watts from a 2.5 to 5 volt supply. Hmm, I think I'll pick up a bunch of these. As always, links are on my website and there's a handy index in the description below. So, I need to go off and flex some biceps now. Thanks for watching. See you next week.